Geek Dad Life presents Toy Geeks, a live toy talk show. Tonight we're going to talk about the first images from Super 7's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Ultimates line. We're also going to talk about McFarlane showing us our first clear look at the new Batman 66 toy line. And we're also going to take a look at some of those new awesome retro style Black Series Star Wars figures, our latest toy hauls. We're going to also try to stump John, all of that and more tonight on Toy Geeks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Toy Geeks. My name is Jay, and with me, as always, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube.com slash Geek Dad Life is my good friend, Sean. John, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you, Jay? I am doing well. I want to take a moment to wish a happy Father's Day to all fathers uh, out there. Happy Father's Day to uh, the fathers in my life um, and, uh, uh, you know, being a father myself and now finally getting to bask in the glow of your kids waiting on you hand and foot on your special day and your wife doing all of the chores for this one glorious day. I just want to say thank you to my my two sons and wife who uh, made for a great Father's Day today, uh, and uh, and yeah. So again, Happy Father's Day, everybody! <laughs> happy Father's Day, and Happy Father's Day to you, Jay. Thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, it was it was nice because uh, if you follow me on Instagram uh, at Geek Dad Life, you probably saw that I was set up at our local toy show today. So it was nice to uh, hang with all of the other. Uh, toy geek dads uh, out there uh, today as well. So it was a lot of fun. But anywho, the chat is hopping. Uh, we got Space Cowboys here. Gamaliel, hello, geeks. Happy Father's Day. Uh, Josh is here. Uh, I say to all the toy dads and regular dads too, I guess. <laughs> uh, and nod dads too. Absolutely. Fur, whatever, like anything. Uh, didn't we just celebrate like Uncle's Day or something? I don't know. Or we, I don't know what we're doing. Last night. There's a day for everything. There's a day for everything. Uh, this is not a Motu night, darn. <laughs> I mean, I, there, there is a, there actually is a little bit of Motu news that I did want to touch upon. So we will get that to that today. Um, happy Geek Dad Day, exactly. Uh, Darth and I'm now happy Toy Dad to Tiny Baby Blood. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, happy. <laughs> Hey guys, happy Father's Day to all geek dads indeed. Uh, a lot of congrats for Dartherian for his new arrival. <laughs> uh, Roberto is here. PD Dubs is here. Uh, seemingly, holy moly, like if you wanted a blood, this was your week to get a blood. <laughs> Everywhere. Uh, Preppy82, wow, my first time ever on Geek Dad Live. Hey, Jay and John, wish you guys a happy Father's Day. Thank you, Preppy82. Welcome. To being here live. Hung Wen is here. I know he is a geek dad as well, if I remember correctly from his chat last week or so. Jonathan, Jack Knight, uh, I think where is it? CAF is in the house. Matt Lynch, uh, Riley Bob is here. Father's Day for the Geek Dads for Life. We should do a little parody song. Bearded Toy Guy is here. Uh, who else is excited about what Target is doing? Yeah, like having figures. It's yeah. great. <laughs> keeping inventory <laughs> it's unbelievable <laughs> yes yes but hey listen if we if we're gonna if we're gonna knock them for not having it we gotta give them gotta give them an attaboy for, yeah. for having this stuff on shelves you know <laughs> uh pd devs is here hey oh free rain uh in assembled in the real Sherman, illinois living my 80s life to the fullest father's day edition of geek dad life engage very true very true. Adam Smedberg found Skelegod. Uh, I saw one at the toy show this weekend. Uh, but Mike from uh, Nerd Bombers is supposed to, to get me uh, one as well. So hopefully I'll have my hands. Uh, and you too, John, on a Skelegod soon enough. But anywho, uh, happy to be here hanging with you all. Um, <laughs> Best Father's Day gift was watching my 18-year-old now officially pay for her own stuff and drive herself to work. Yahoo! Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely done. Good, good work there. And Landeros is here. Beast Wars, uh, Nelson. Uh, man, it's um, it's a packed house. Packed Full house. house. So, uh, without any further ado, 
We got a lot of stuff that happened this week. We've got uh, new Power Rangers. We've got great images and really has me pumped of the Batman 66 line from McFarlane. Uh, we have a little bit of Motu news with the Motu Revelations line and some pre-orders for what Wave 2 is going to be for the Motu Revelations toy line. So we'll get into that. We also got new Star Wars Black Series figures. We've got Mattel Creations doing more stuff on trying to get you to spend more money than you need to spend on their Hot Wheels NFTs. Uh, we also got some more Universal Monsters. Tons of stuff. Plus, I'm sure... Some pretty dope toy hauls uh, that I think uh, you have, John. And I I got a lot of stuff as well being at a toy show this weekend, which is really exciting. But let's jump into the top of the hour with our main subject, and that is Super 7 at the, I guess, the Mighty Morphin Power Con. Uh, and toying around is who got the uh, unveiling. So give him... A follow on the old instas uh, but at the official power morphicon super seven showed us their first images of their upcoming power rangers ultimates line or mighty morphin power rangers ultimates line and you know being a fan of mmpr it's like the last thing i was really all into as a kid uh, before mm -hmm. I transitioned into adult collector, not really adult collector, but being a collector versus just being a kid buying toys. Um, you know, it has a soft place in my heart and I've really kind of dug what Hasbro's done with the lightning collection, you know, for 20 bucks, they're pretty good figures. Um, but this is doing what super seven does best, which is taking it to the next level. Uh, John, what are your thoughts here on these really just two images of Goldar uh, from Super 7's upcoming MMPR Ultimates toy line. First, that it looks it looks amazing. <laughs> the uh, the the shot that you just had up there, where the the lightning background sort yeah. of, I mean, that looks like a, a still from the show. The way the face is, it's un it's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> like and again, this is going to be Super Seven versus hasbro just like super seven versus neca this is round two different ip it's <laughs> this is on who it it looks fantastic and you're right it is it looks like uh like a statue you'd get off sideshow or something this image you know like this right it, it, it really does <laughs> um uh let me actually i, I screen capped an image so i can kind of zoom into it here so let me, let me pull up that uh, but before I pull up the, the, the higher res image, let me go bigger screen here. Um, so I, I, I have not taken my Lightning Collection Goldar out of the box yet. Uh, I've, I pick up every, you know, MMPR Lightning Collection when I can find. And as you can see, it's it's pretty good, you know, for 19 yep. bucks. Mm -hmm. It's kind of casted in a pearlescent gold plastic. But it's not even close not no. even close to uh these images and you know we know that even though we haven't seen any of these in person yet let me pull up the pictures here of goldar where'd you go goldar you disappeared on me there you are there you go um looking at these pictures of goldar uh it's not even a competition so i mean i think it comes down to price you know if we're using silver hawks as a closer estimate right, is this going to be an upscaled figure compared to the regular uh, Power Rangers is going to cost more than that kind of mid fifties price range that a lot of the Ultimates figures are going for. Mm -hmm. uh, who knows? That's yet to be seen, right? We don't know that officially. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the biggest uh, the biggest line that's going to be drawn is when we see the human face sculpts and face paints. Yes. The you know the MMPR ones they're okay. You can so, <laughs> some of them are are really bad, really bad. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's some that you can tell, you know, what the human counterpart is to that to that colored ranger uniform. Mm -hmm. Super seven. I have a feeling it's going to be perfect across the board. You know, they have very, very few bad paint. You know, you, you don't really have to worry about the paint that you're getting in because you're not buying mm -hmm. it off the shelf. So you can't really see it. You, you have to wait for it to come in. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's something you have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, comics 1017 says apparently the Goldar is going to be in scale with the Megazord, not the Rangers that they make. 
So are you finally get your wish, John, of uh, of actual kaiju sized, you know, Goldars and and all the other? Yeah, like like it'll be a good comparison for fighting. If, if that's I, you know, that's cool. But I kind of I kind of want it to be scaled to the Power Rangers figures. But yeah, I, it's there's details we don't have yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, all of the accessories are doing what they do with the Ultimates line. Tons of accessories. Um, you know, you're getting you're getting the wings, which again, the Hasbro Lightning Collection one, no wings. <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah, no- isn't isn't there an exclusive one? Is it GameStop with wings or without? I, that sounds right, but the normal one, no wings. So you're getting the wings here. You're getting an alternate head sculpt with the open mouth, which again looks freaking awesome. Uh, the coloring looks more accurate compared to the Lightning Collection one. Mm-hmm. You're getting extra hands. He definitely looks a little bit bulkier, too. Oh, yeah. And, you know, this was kind of casted in a, that pearlescent gold. I like the gold paint here. I think it comes across better. Yep. Yep, definitely. This one. And if they if they can make gold look this good, why can't they make silver look good? I know. <laughs> no, that's you're 100% on the same track that I was thinking. It, why couldn't they do this with silver? <laughs> <laughs> I, like I get it. They're going for silver hawks. They're going for the the cartoon look. But really, the fans have been screaming for silver silver hawks for oh. years. <laughs> and again, you didn't have to do the vac metal. I get it if you're you know a little apprehensive yep. about vac metal. But right. Great. Like if you did silver like this, paint like this. Hmm. That would have been awesome. Totally passable. Yeah. Everybody would be happy. Yeah. I mean, you're still you're like, well, isn't it back metal? Sure. But I think on the whole, m- most everybody would be satisfied with that. Yep. But, you know, that's a whole other thing. So you Super 7, you still have time to fix that situation because it looks like you did a great job here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And I do think that maybe the, the case of Megazords being this size, it'll be the same case with figures. You know, because in in the cartoon or not the cartoon in the TV show, you know, like Goldar would upsize himself to fight yep. Megazord, but he would also be Ranger sized to fight the Rangers. Yeah. So I think it'll the I think that the Mega if they do Megazord in this scale, it'll be much like the Voltron Ultimates, mm-hmm. where it was you know it's just gonna everything will just be in scale, mm-hmm. and it you know it is what it is. I'd rather have bigger. Um, you know, actual deluxe size Megazords fighting a deluxe size Goldar. Uh, yes. I mean, uh, uh, Kaiju size, yes. But I don't know if Goldar is the first one I would want. Even though I know Goldar got upsized. If I, I again, I haven't watched the show in a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Remember, remembering correctly, he definitely got upsized at least once and fought the Megazord. But there's other ones I think I'd rather have in like the Kaiju scale before Goldar because Goldar to me in my mind was always scaled more like in the more human right scale uh than if he was kaiju size but you know to the the monster of the week uh characters um i would much rather see those kaiju side but again i'm nitpicking whatever i'll take whatever i'll take <laughs> i'll take and it. anything that will go with your panache play style megazord set exactly 100% exactly um and uh, comic says an actual gold Goldar, unlike Hasbro's. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's kind of gold. It's kind of gold. It's more gold than the Silver Hawks are silver for Super Seven, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, uh, Pity Devs might be in popular opinion, uh, but here, but that Silver Hawks line looks terrible. You're I not- don't think it's that unpopular. No. Again, I spent a weekend just hanging out with toy geeks and friends, and a lot of people felt the same way about Silver Hawks. Hanging with you all here Sunday nights, that seems to be the the undercurrent and the feeling and sentiment. Mm-hmm. Which is a shame, because the sculpts look great. It looks like they jumped right out of the show. So, like, just uh, just a little, that little 10, 20% push it across the finish line as a slam dunk. Um and uh, comic says Pixel Tan's interview with Brian said that they are still trying different paint mixes to make them more silvery metallic looking. 
So again, I think there's still time for that. hundred yeah. percent. Hopefully we're fixing that. Um, Jamie Vaughn with Super 7 announcing G.I. Joe soon. I wonder if they will be like this, but uh, Real American Heroes, man, that would be flat out amazing. Now, I, from a, what I understand is they aren't doing an Ultimates line. It's going to be mainly reaction, but it's in the style, the animated style of Real American Hero. Um, have you heard anything different than that, John? No, that's that's about all I've heard. I, d- I hope that they don't do an Ultimates anything. I want classified to be the, you know, the, the standard mm-hmm. of, of six inches or, or, you know, ultimates would be seven inches, but still sure. I don't want any, any other than classified personally. Uh, Cause I think they knock them all, all out of the park. They do. They do. But you know, that's a very highly detailed modern action figure. What if super seven, how they doing animated with uh, seemingly silver Hawks and, um, the Transformers line. What if they did a GI Joe line that really like looked like it was the Rainbow Productions, you know, Real American Hero show? I wouldn't uh, want those figures personally, but like, what, what's your feeling there? I think it would be it would be a good idea. Yeah, there's a, I bet there's a lot of people that would be into it. Um, mm-hmm. Again, like you, um, I wouldn't be because um, I need to stick with one thing. <laughs> but I think there would be an overwhelming positive response to mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, especially when like the the retro series of the yeah. four inch Joes is isn't isn't even retro. It's just twenty fifth anniversary figures. Yeah, and and here's my question about the reaction line. The reaction for me is hit or miss. Some things I really like. Some things like yeah, I don't know. But you know, it is what it is. And I think you know, it's like a pop figure, or whatever. It is its style. That it you know what you're getting into with it, and you either like it or you don't. Um. And for me, it's like sometimes I'm like, yes, I want one. Or I was like, ah, no, I'm actually okay. Mm-hmm. And for me, where the line to cross for re- reaction for me is, you know, where does its vintage toy represent- representation lie? And for G.I. Joe, you know, so much of that experience, especially as a kid playing with them, the three and three quarter inch toys, was the articulation, you know, as much as the five POA Kenner style figure is also just as iconic in my mind as a kid, as well as I think just objectively speaking, the, the articulation of uh, that Micronauts articulation of the, the real American hero line is also so ingrained to my memory and uh, nostalgia for like that scale of GI Joe. Do you think, that may might hold back the GI Joe reaction line a little bit, or do you think people won't care? Um, I think, I think reaction goes one of two ways. Um, no, you know, no matter the property, I think if, if it's GI Joe, I think reaction is, is bad for GI Joe. Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the, the Mo two reaction figures. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a fan of the card art on reaction figures. True. True. Than than any of the figures I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from, I'm a big fan of the Misfits ones, but yeah. that's essentially the same exact figure over <laughs> and over and over again in different colorways, because they match the colorway to the album art. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, the GI Joe stuff, if they did a good enough job on the card art, where it was, you know, that that sort of burst in the in the background, mm, yeah. If it was, you know, updated a little bit, but not too much, mm-hmm. I think the card art will sell them. Yeah, I don't think the figures will sell on their own. On their own, no, mm-hmm. no, because you know, to your point with you know the the big selling point of GI Joe's with the articulation when that was like the most articulated thing of the time outside yeah. of Micronauts. Yeah, it was the vehicles that sold them. You know, yeah. and everything being in scale. Yep. Absolutely. So I don't think, you know, it's kind of like when Gentle Giant did the um, the jumbo size mm-hmm. figures of Joe's that yep. they they did not do well at all. No. And surprising. they were kind of giving what people they thought what people wanted. But mm-hmm. it was that was a big bust. Yeah. Uh, John uh, says the reaction. My pet monster was amazing. Agreed. Yep. It was like a different scale. It was not a stuffed animal. And I th- I have one. It's amazing. I love it. Um, Blue Cat, uh, I think, has a really good uh, call out here. With the way King Sphinx and Pumpkin Wrapper are sitting on store shelves now, uh, Hasbro could focus on Rangers and uh, Army Builder Minions and let Super 7 deal with 
the Zords and monsters. John, what do you think of that? That would be perfect. Yeah. That would be, that, <laughs> that would be ideal. Yeah. If, if, you know, if super seven got the license, you mm -hmm. know, and I don't, I don't know how that works between uh, Bandai and, and Hasbro um, with the licensing for the older stuff. Um, but I think if, if it was sort of like a, you know, like, <laughs> like just not on paper, but you know, some sort of verbal agreement, we'll handle the big stuff. You guys do the, the main characters and army builders. Mm -hmm. We'll do the Zords and the monsters yeah. Kaiju style. Yeah. I think that would be perfect. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know who's, who's sculpting these. Th this sculpting looks amazing. It has the feel of a f horseman sculpt. Mm -hmm. Do we know if horsemen sculpting these? It seems like they're doing all the Super 7 stuff, but I, I don't know. I'd imagine they're doing the sculpting because that, I mean, that face looks, I mean, that's that whole thing, that whole aesthetic looks like yeah. Mythic Legions. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and again, like, that's when the horsemen are at their best, is if they're doing beasts and creatures and stuff like that. Yep. So... If it is such that, you know, uh, Super 7's Ultimates line will focus on Zords and Monsters, I think that you're going to have, you know, Horsemen in Hog Heaven. They're going to be super happy. Yeah. Um, and uh, because the, I do think the the Rangers themselves, the Light Clash, are fine. Like, I don't... It's, it's such a simple design that I don't know if I necessarily need a hyper or you know a, a 55 dollar version of a ranger unless to your point john like you actually get a good head sculpt which is weird how lightning collection has not really done a great job with their head sculpts when freaking uh black series and marvel legends and plasma series has done a pretty darn good job with their photorealistic faces and then you've got lightning collection that's just like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> the one bad wheel at a on a shopping cart <laughs> right <laughs> but um as as someone who collects lightning collection let me ask you mm -hmm. how important are those heads do you do split do you display any of them with their no way unmasked no way and is there any articulation that you think is missing from those figures that super seven could add no not really and to be honest, I don't think articulation is Super Seven strong suit. I don't think it's uh, as as amazing as the Horseman sculpts are. I don't think their articulation has ever been mind blowing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been pretty standard fare. I mean, even even on uh, their and this might be a cost uh, effect thing, but even on Bebop, who's you know figure of the year uh, for me, is it did it come out this year? Uh, it's probably a front runner for figure of the year. Uh, it has no ab crunch. Mm -hmm. So um, even more so, I don't think Super 7's angle is ever the really good articulation where I think Hasbro has done a really good job with their innovation articulation. I think um, the Lightning Collection ones are are great, especially yep. compared to, you know, there was a time when I was going to be in on the SH Figure Arts uh, uh, Rangers. I bought a few. They're great but they're kind of pricey. And then I sold a couple and then just got out of it. So lightning collection was perfect. Cause it was like 20 bucks, really good articulation, good looking Ranger figures. Um, so I was like, cool, I'll, I'll be in on this one. Makes sense. Um, I think, I think if super seven sticks to doing just monsters, that's, that's the key mm -hmm. monsters, Zords, mega Zords. That's a setup to win. Yeah, I think so too. Because again, I think you're you're playing into if the horsemen are doing this, you're playing into their amazing strengths. Yep. And these will look good on your shelf mm -hmm. without any ranger figures. They'll look good with your, I mean, they'll look good with classics, masters classics figures. They'll look good next to turtles. Mm -hmm. You know, every, these guys will fit in perfectly with everything else that the that is in the ultimates umbrella. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nightmare uh, 10880 says it has to do with the actor's likeness rights. 
They don't have active contracts like they have with actors on brands such as Marvel Stars and Ghostbusters. That's interesting. Because if I remember correctly, the actor who plays Zach, uh, like, kind of dissed to the head sculpt because it is awful. Yep. Uh, like on Twitter or something like that. <laughs> and he's like, hey, if you need you know any help, Hasbro, let me know. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like the equivalent of a bad police sketch. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i i think i don't know i'm really excited about it this has me really pumped and i can't wait to get more information more detail on on what's going to come here but again if and i and i think uh i'm blanking on the name some moo was it moo cat boo cat uh what boo cat said here i think would be the ideal scenario where you let the horsemen do their thing with beasts and and zords and you let Hasbro keep putting out, pumping out, uh, you know, army builders and, and ranger figures. I don't know if it would be that targeted or that separated, but I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, for uh, Dave, Chambers says, for me personally, I think Hasbro has not done well with the sculpt on the rangers, helmets, and civilians, plus the fact that you have to buy the same figure over again to get a proper helmet and whatnot. That's fair. That's fair. You know, I do give them a bit of, like... A pass because it's nineteen bucks or nineteen ninety nine, but uh, again, I would be fine if they did Rangers, but if they didn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't lament that too much. Mm -hmm. I look forward. I'm looking forward to what else. What else they're going to show us? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but still, I I think what Brian and company are doing at Super Seven, all of their licensing. Everything is incredible. It's incredible. Like they're a mom and pop. Well, they were. I think they're much more. I mean, they're still a smaller scale toy company. But again, something kind of being done out of you know his t shirt shop and then turning into a big thing is 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 kind of crazy when you think about it. It is. Yeah, <laughs> the guy that was just a graphic artist. Yeah. Just... <laughs> and I, and I'm pretty sure it was a side hustle. I think. Yeah, he had like he had like a real job. You know, like. Um, I think he. I want to say, did he work for Nike? Maybe. That might be it. And then, yeah, this just his Super 7 Japanese toy magazine just kept on rolling. Yeah, yeah. We got to get him on the show. Seems like a really cool guy. I uh, would love to chat with him more uh, uh, with that. All right. Uh, let's move along here. We got a lot of stuff to cover. So let's go uh, next to McFarland Toys. Uh, that is just hitting home runs with their DC license, like doing so much with it. Uh, McFarland did one of his classic, you know, video intro kind of showing us the product. Uh, I won't spend too much time there because they also posted uh, pictures and stuff on their website showcasing uh, the figures, which again, the, the, the prompt, okay, does it have closer shots? Um, you know, at first glance, whatever that thing was that we saw, I wasn't loving the Adam West, but I actually, I actually dig it, uh, seeing him show it in his video and seeing it here, you know, as on the official photos. Um, I, I, I think it comes across pretty well, especially the kind of Adam West, uh, head sculpt, I think looks pretty good. Um, when you're looking at it up close. Uh, what are your thoughts there, uh, John, on actually kind of seeing the figures, seeing the packaging um, when McFarlane showed it to us uh, earlier this week? Yeah, uh, the the Batman looks way better than than what we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to guess maybe those were just um, first paint paint samples. Mm -hmm. So, you know, much like a lot of other figures, the paint's not perfect, mm -hmm. but the sculpt is actually there. It's just not painted correctly. Mm -hmm. but that Batman does look really, really good. I think they did a pretty good job getting an Adam West likeness. Yeah. Um, the, the Robin Burt Ward still not that great. No, but, it's a little boyish, like Pinocchio head or something. Yeah. <laughs> not great, <laughs> but you know what? I'll take it. Yeah. I, it, it, you know, if you're not really looking too hard, it looks fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But the Adam West, I forget, they got his cheekbones and everything. They did a pretty good job. Yeah, um, yeah they did. And soft, good capes. Mm -hmm. 
uh the the articulation will be doll head Stephen haynes that's absolutely china doll head you know yeah. like those creepy dolls you see in an antique shop <laughs> <laughs> all music fan says robin looks more like a super friends robin sure yeah but i think a creepy china doll head is actually probably more like <laughs> uh, they look smallish because they are six inch scale versus the seven inch that we've been used to from mm -hmm. mcfarland so they are going to be smaller than all of the dc stuff we've seen from mcfarland so far yeah but still when you think about it i mean six inches still pretty much the standard they're going to be just as big as a marvel legends series mm -hmm. yeah yeah i i actually kind of like that six inch scale because it's letting us get play sets and vehicles caesar romero joker looks great even though i don't really see a mustache under there too much but i think it looks fantastic yeah i wish they matted his suit a little bit more it looks a little bit too shiny yeah i wish yeah. it was a little bit more matte mm -hmm. but yeah that that is a good caesar romero likeness mm -hmm. yep the uh, articulation is going to be iffy it's kind of weird that how they did the knees where it, it's still a ball swivel mm -hmm. for like a side to side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is weird, but honestly on this line, I don't, and this might be a bad take, but I don't care about articulation too much. I, I don't know why I don't care as much on this versus others. You know, I, yeah. I, don't... I think it's because we're getting a play set. That, play set that... And like this show wasn't known for like crazy poses and stuff like that. Like, you know, it's like kind of running in, in place and like so like we don't really need that much. I, at least maybe that's it. I'm justifying it in my mind, maybe. It makes sense. It wasn't very yeah, it wasn't very dynamic. No. I mean, he wasn't very <laughs> acrobatic. It was Adam yeah. West. Again, I mean, they can do this where they're climbing up the <laughs> climb, climbing across the floor wall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so i you know you don't need that much uh but i do think not having an ankle joint could be problematic i think that's yeah. problematic for sure but but the important part here is we're getting vehicles and play sets now this uh Batmobile is a little small <laughs> it's a little small yeah but i i think the look of it's fantastic i i it it really pops the colors and paint look fantastic yeah, it looks perfect. Um, I'm I'm hoping maybe whoever put the figures in there, they just didn't seat them in enough. Mm -hmm. Like maybe there's because obviously, you know, their heads didn't stick up above the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's it doesn't look to scale right now. But yeah, maybe they can sit in more. There might be hopefully more room for their legs kind of like push in there a little bit. Yeah, they have cloth, cloth, good, 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 cloth, good capes. So it should be possible. But I, the car looks fantastic. Where the Mattel one I thought was good. It was scaled well, but it kind of looked dull mm -hmm. in person. This, the red lining, everything really pops. Yeah, the paint on this one looks way better than than the Mattel version. Yeah. Um, so that has me really excited. And even if it doesn't quite scale right, it has that kind of Mego quality to it where like the big Batman and Robin sit in the little Batmobile. <laughs> Oh, you know, it's it's very toyetic uh, in its in its presentation. So it's it's, but again, I, I I'm with you, John. I think maybe just a bad you know figure posing. Yeah, uh, they need uh, McFarland. If you need some toy geeks, I think there's a few in the chat uh, here, or or John and I can help out if you if you need the help on presentation. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, uh, I dig that. And then really, uh, the showstopper here is the fact we're getting a. Uh, a actual uh bat cave play set um that i don't know i'm just really pumped about this play set it's I'm, I'm i'm super excited Tw it's 24 inches wide i think mm -hmm. i think that's what they said yeah but i mean sort of multiple levels you know because you got the 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 uh sort of that landing up mm -hmm. there at the top of the ladder. You got the bat poles on the sides, mm -hmm. the computer console. Yeah. Um, have we found out how much this is going to cost yet? Does it say on the sides? Money, 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 money. No, there's, there's none that I've seen there. We don't, I don't think we know the price yet. And that's, that's fine. I'm going to buy it regardless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think 
it'll be much, right? If if I'm comparing it to the seven inch scale McFarlane stuff with hot, tons of detail, tons of paint applications, highly articulated, I don't I don't envision this being that expensive. No, I'm I'm 80, 80 or less. That's that's my guess. A lot of people are saying thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. Boy, that's that's great. Thirty that is great. For a play set in two thousand and twenty one. I'm I I yeah. I think that's great. That's he's he would. It's like the company's not making money. They're, they're... Uh, <laughs> Solo six one nine ers said McFarland said everything. You get all the figures, the car, and the play set for under a hundred bucks. Wow. That's, That's awesome. cr- that is crazy. I I'm, I don't even know what to how to respond to that. That is unbelievable. Yeah, uh, uh, for Batman fans, for any kid that grew up from '66, really till the Burton Batman films, and even then, or really probably any kid from then till probably animated series, this was your Batman. You know that you would watch on TV. Um, yep, and. Uh, uh, so that's that's a that's a that's like thirty years of kids, you know, of generations <laughs> of kids. Like so, that a lot of us, uh, you know, even if born in the sixties, seventies, eighties, um, you know, this. I think all of us have a lot a soft place in our heart for the sixty six bats, and uh, finally getting like a playset like this that is yeah. as much as I love the Mego style and it has its it has its place a hundred percent, but having something like this is a Maybe not seem like a big big deal, but I think it's a really big deal. It is. There, there's definitely. I mean, we've only seen this stuff for what a week now, mm-hmm. and it seems like there's already more steam behind this than there was the Mattel stuff. Yeah. And there's it in its packaging. I, I, I yeah, I'm I'm so pumped. It's so silly because it's not. It is it's not that impressive, you know. But it's just it 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 has all the pieces you need. It has <laughs> it has the poles, it has the back computer, it has the backdrop. Like it has what you need. Yeah, it 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 looks like it probably did on the set where everything just looked purposely fake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Oh man, uh, this line has so much potential. I want oh, a, I want a bat boat. That's what I really want. Ooh, yes. Bat boat, bat copter, um, the, the bat, bat cycle, side car. Yeah, I freaking love this. I love so much of this. McFarling, nicely done. And to your point about the potential for the retro line, um, uh, I think uh, there's a lot there. And I think Classic Action Figure says it really well here. If this succeeds, then a 1989 Batman and Batmobile would be almost guaranteed. Unless there are legal issues. That would be next level amazing, uh, CAF, if that came to to be true. I don't think there would be any legal issues. There shouldn't be. Yeah, it's it's DC. Yeah. DC license. Oh, man. I'm I'm so all in for all of it. You know what? I want I want a Bat Cave playset uh, with the dinosaur and the penny. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, I don't know if they're selling the shark. I think the shark is uh, sold separately. It <laughs> <This laughs> was clearly made with some string and some pieces of wood that they broke. To yeah. Make so I don't know if that's an official uh, playset there, but still really cool. He'd be uh, holding the shark repellent if that was a if that was a for sale item. <laughs> uh, exactly. Obviously, need the shark repellent with that shark set. <laughs> but yeah, eighty nine bats. Oh, yes, please. please, 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 please. Um, or even super friends. Like, I, there's just with with the DC retro line. There's so much you could do, mm-hmm. and it, and then you can really uh while Kenner's um the dark Knight collection and the Batman returns collection is fantastic and had some great vehicles, play sets and figures. It also brought about the 10,000 Batman variants, which Arlen has uh, taken part in a little bit as well, but uh, the Batman forever and Batman and Robin line. Uh, they never did a they, for the Batman and Robin. They never did like a really good 
like actual movie style version of those two characters. And I remember, you know, trying to find like, I want the one that I saw in the movie of Batman and Robin from Batman forever. Uh, so even if they did those, I thought, I think that'd be really cool. I, I, I'm, I'm for whatever I'm, I'm for all of it. I'll buy, I'll buy any of it, but a Clooney. <laughs> And it's nothing. I'm just not into it. I don't. That's the one I just don't want. Would Would you get the Arnold Schwarzenegger? (laughs) I've never sat through that whole movie. Neither have I. Couldn't do it. I I bought it on VHS. I never finished the tape. (laughs) Uh, Hall of Justice would be like again. Do Super Friends. Do a Hall of Justice. I, it's one of my favorite places of all time. The Superpowers Hall of Justice. You can see it right there. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite places of all times. All times. Scoop of ice, night attack, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Hung Wen says the Kenner Batman Forever Batcave is awesome. Well, it's the same Batcave. Like they, they repainted the Batcave from, I believe it was Dark Knight Collection. Maybe it was Batman Returns. It was around that time. I'm pretty sure it was Dark Knight Collection. And they they repainted it and changed that same mold every single time they did one for what John like fifteen years that that you know Wayne Manor opens up into the Batcave. Yeah, I think the only one that was ever different was that one that had like oh, it, it didn't it didn't open up side by side. It was like yes. right the front and then went down levels you know towards I, the you're back. Right. You're right. That I'm sorry. They the, the, that was the Batman Forever one, that crazy one. And that one's expensive now, I think. It is. It is. I'm sorry, Hung. I, I, I realize they've redone the other one, the Batman or the Bruce Wayne Manor one so many times. I forgot there was a Batman Forever one that was like crazy and, and looked like it looked in Batman Forever. Good call. Good call out there. Um, Bat nipples and all. Uh, where did it go? Here we go. Hi, Brandon. <laughs> Um, oh, Carrie. <laughs> Clooney was the worst thing to happen to Bruce Wayne since his parents tripped down crime. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I would say shot fired, but I was like, no, nah, it's too, too soon. It's too soon. <laughs> too soon <to> the Wayne family. <laughs> uh, well, well done, Gary. Yeah, that's, that's very well done. <laughs> Uh, ah, man. Uh, Riley Bob says that was my favorite place at the breakaway windows was always my good guys entrance. Yeah, the, the Wayne Manor, the, the windows at the top would break in. It had so many different play areas. I, I'm looking at right now. I have it sitting up there. If you watch on my toy room tours, uh, it's up there. I freaking love that play set. I love them all. Any bat cave is a good bat cave, in my opinion. Even if it's a bad bat cave, I think it's a good bat cave. Like the Toy Biz bat cave, that was my first one as a kid, and I loved the hell out of the thing, even though it was like a piece of blow mold plastic with like some cardboard on the back of it. <laughs> any, any bat caves is, is still a good bat cave in my yep. Um Monkey Jiba says, is the Batmobile bigger than the Mattel one? I don't think so. The Mattel one was scale. It's a big Batmobile. Um, mm-hmm. It does look smaller. Um, it'd be hard to tell until you can see one in person. <laughs> Home Music fans, says, Adam West did say once that his nipples were real in that costume. <laughs> Uh, oh damn Josh it looks like Gary is the real Joe chill <laughs> <laughs> going 89 bats it would be a uh, uh, Joker Jack what was Jack's last name um, Jack Napier yeah Jack Napier that's it that's it um, exactly McFarlane forever Riddler like Riddler uh, Jim Carrey Riddler uh, Tommy yeah, Tommy Lee Jones Two-Face um, uh, like the Penguin again all of them I just want all of them. McFarlane, if you're listening, Todd, we're, we're friends. Todd, I'll call you Todd. Make it happen. <laughs> Tomothy, Todrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, moving on. It's pretty dope. Masters of the Universe. Pre-orders going up for Revelations Wave 1, which we've seen the pictures for, but Wave 2 is also on that list. This is new to me. I have this is completely new to me. So pre-order links on the Chosen Prime. Uh, that wave two, we have no photos of them. 
will include Man at Arms, Tila, Beast Man, which makes sense. We've seen them in the trailer, but one we haven't seen, Spikor. Wow. That's there. That, now, did we see Spikor in that very early? Um, it was like that blacked out shadow picture that had eight figures on it. I want to say there was a figure that that had the trident arm. I may still have a picture. I think. Here we go. Hold on. I don't see a spike over there. There's, it, this is totally clawful. That one down there looks like clawful. Yep. I don't hmm. see a spike or this looks kind of trap jaw ish there. But who, I mean, who knows what they're really showing us here, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They, they could have 30 of them finished already. True. But I'm surprised we're getting spike or in wave two. Right, it kind of seems out of left field, especially we didn't see him in the trailer. So, is he going to be more in the thing? I don't know. Or they just want to do a cool care. Like that's a, you know, if you're gonna make a adult collector highly detailed character, it's a neat one to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know how they did Moss Man, which is a departure from how he had been done before. Spiker could be done in a completely different way. That'd be really cool. Yep. Um, and we don't even know if he's going to be revelation spike or he could be any spike or cause this is all under the masterverse series. Right. So here's my, the, the, I had one criticism of the classic spike or is it was a little bit later in the line where they kind of stopped kind of going for the best representation of all time version of a character and they kind of started going either like we're giving you the, you know, toy version of this character, you know, mm -hmm. um, with no alternate head sculpts or anything. So it's a it's a nice spike or but it looks very much like the vintage figure, which is a little goofy. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it spike or to me seems like a character right for making him more menacing looking than the vintage toy did. And the classics one didn't quite nail that for me. Um, so I would I would almost prefer the spike or to be in this new anime more detailed style. What what's your thoughts there, John? Um, exactly. <laughs> He's probably one of my least exciting figures of the classic series mm -hmm. because he is. He's just an upscaled version of the vintage counterpart. Yeah. Um, you know, you do get that alternate hand, so you can have him have two. Sure humanoid hands without the, yeah. the trident but yeah. that's that's boring so yeah. <laughs> you know that that hand has stayed in a bag forever <laughs> spike or with two hand action <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i i would love to see a you know a reimagination of of spike or mm -hmm. and if you did you ever see the the one from the power con the filmation version of spike or yeah yes his yeah. <laughs> now his spikes the way super seven did him his spikes actually hurt they were like nail heads on his body or nail tips you know sure, sure yeah, like, yeah. A, <laughs> like you could hit that guy on a board and it would drive mm -hmm. in yeah yeah i would yeah i'm excited to see what the spike or is going to look like uh finney says classic spike or fell short like clawful did yeah exactly and again i think it's because the figures um the original toys while they're charming because they're like a vintage style in their own way they're kind of goofy i mean the characters yeah. those are goofy but you know i think something that 2000x did well with some of those goofier characters that make like a really menacing monster out of them like clawful is a monster like really cool um and the classics one at that point in the line they kind of phoned it in or just maybe didn't have the budget to go all the way like they did with some of the figures earlier in the line where you know you took moss man and and you gave us one that looked like the toy but then you gave us a new head sculpt to make it more 2000 x looking and it looks freaking awesome mm -hmm. plus you uh, had like the vine with the, the yeah. knife mm -hmm. and so they just did the little they went that little bit that 20 percent more that made those those earlier figures in the classic line that much better where later on 
with some characters I think were, you know, primed to kind of go a little bit, like maybe put 20% more to make it amazing, like Clawful, like Spike, or um, they just maybe didn't have the budget or wherewithal to do uh, that Masterverse could do, you know, a good job of kind of giving us those that we never got. Mm -hmm. I think they were also doing so many, um, you know, for like post 2012, mm -hmm. because that, you know, 2009, 2010, the, the 12 month subscription pretty much yielded 12 figures. Mm -hmm. But then past that, it was three packs during the year. It was more beasts. It was, yep. you know, the oversized figures, mm -hmm. you know, the, the vehicles, it was probably what 25 items a yeah. year because they were also adding in the, the club etheria stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I mean, they, I, I, they, kinda, I, I had to scale back cause it was, it was getting too much eventually. Yeah. Those, those last couple of years I, I didn't sub then I cherry picked cause it was, I didn't want any of the she stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it was getting a little much, Yeah, but in hindsight, it actually, <laughs> Compared to what we spend on figures now, <laughs> it wasn't that bad. All right, let's let's keep moving here. Uh, Black series. What are your thoughts on? We talked about it. I think our first episode. What got us into collecting and Power of the Force two for a lot of people is what transitioned us as you know kids buying toys to collectors. Um, I think for both of us that was like the toy line that shifted us from kids buying toys the to collectors yep uh officially um what are your thoughts here on these power of the force uh backed card carded figures uh and and you know uh, orange card not even green card orange card power of the force two figures what's your thoughts i love it, it they kind of gave me the tingles when i first seen them right <laughs> i mean greed greedo looks proper yep Luke and Han should have been buffed out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you you wanted a little more Royd, uh, a little more, you know, Roger Clemens, Barry Bonds. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted that, you know, 1995 Power of the Force 2 ridiculous looking <laughs> V-tapered torso. <laughs> you know, that's a good, you know, I they probably wouldn't have done it, but no, it would it would look stupid. Could they've at least humored us like in the presentation and put like a freaking uh, He-Man torso in there? Yeah, so or like yeah, did a mock up with like a Marvel Legends Hercules figure uh -huh. with, yeah. with Luke's head snapped on. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, Phineas, yeah, should have had these super long lightsabers, a long saber. Actually, I want I want a uh, <laughs> a short saber, long tray. That's what I want, Hasbro. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this extra room for? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, <laughs> feed Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I like it. I like it. Yeah, I, these, I these are cool. As much as I love the vintage original Kenner style card backs, you, it's it's an iconic card back. Top five toy card back of all time um there it, there's just something that hit me in the nostalgic bone harder than i thought it would mm -hmm. than in these <laughs> yeah these uh, these have a special place in my heart yeah same same um so that's pretty exciting uh what am i hearing about walmart pulling the rex reissue i didn't realize that was a thing um so that's a that's a bummer, but it looks like we're getting another Rex. I am behind on Bad Batch, so I assume this look for Rex is Bad Batch based, because um, I, I know he I saw in the trailer he's in the trailer, um, he's in the Bad Batch uh, colorways here. So uh, I haven't seen this look on him yet, but I love Rex, so um, excited to get more Rex figures here. Um, we're also getting uh, uh, the bad version of um, what's his name. Uh, Crosshair, the Imperial version, which I think is dope. Um, but still, a lot of great Black Series figures here up for pre-order uh, that I'll be into. But yeah, these retro style ones, so pumped. And I remember, I believe it was Greedo, because again, I would go to, um, uh, my mom worked at a mall, and I would go with her, especially during the summer, 
uh, at least once a week. Uh, and I would go to KB toy stores and they went open till nine o'clock, but she had to get there like seven o'clock in the morning. And I would go walk out in the mall and then look into the KB toy store at like 8 a.m. and try to look through the window to see what new power of the force figures they had for that day. And uh, I remember I saw the first green card I ever saw was a Greedo. And, you know, it's not like we had stuff like YouTube and stuff where you'd get or or I don't know comic con conventions where they talk about new card back styles or whatever i found out just by looking in like i always did and i was like they changed it to green (laughs) like oh my god and i'm so excited i got a green card like this is this is amazing this is a such a big change with a foil sticker on and everything so it was such an overreaction Uh, that's so true I was like, oh my God, I have a, I have an orange card Greedo and a green card Greedo. Oh, this is going to be worth so much money. <laughs> <laughs> but Greedo was the hard one to find, wasn't he? Uh, I thought so. Well, the the uh, Princess Leia was the hard one. Yeah. No doubt. Old monkey face Leia. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Greedo was a tough one, too. Greedo was a tough one, too. Um mm. So I, I'm really pumped for this. Uh, yeah, I miss KB. I miss KB as well. Uh, Gary, who's here, I think, worked at KB Toys uh, once upon a time. Toys R Us, 100%. Miss that so much. Um, My only issue with this Star Wars by the Force line, we just got agreed on the 50th anniversary line with the Amazon Vintage Star Wars card back. That's fair. So if you didn't go here, you know who? what I would have loved to have seen? Um, one of the Power of the Force figures that is in that line of ridiculous Power of the Force 2 figures was the R five D four with the freaking oh, yeah. launcher in the middle of him? Where his body just split in half. <laughs> you, you killed R five D four, and he has a freaking rocket launcher. <laughs> that was that is ridiculous. Yeah, Hasbro, make that. <laughs> just just take a perfectly good R five D four. You've made a great one, and just break it. Shove a rocket launcher in there. <laughs> Slap it on the power of the force two card back, and I think you got yourself a winner. <laughs> you sold two already. <laughs> oh my god! All right, moving along. Mattel Creations doing an NFT, uh, NFTs for uh, a Hot Wheels car. If you don't know NFTs, uh, it's one of those you know. Um, uh, investment opportunities like a one of a kind coin or collectible or something that people can bid on or whatever. So uh Mattel Creations is taking these legends digital with the launch of the Hot Wheels NFT garage featuring their original debut designs in a completely new way. The twin mill De- Deora 2 and Bone Shaker have been minted in the form of three one of one NFTs dubbed the first editions. This is your only chance to own three one of one exclusive pieces of Hot Wheels history. So it's not even a car. You're just getting like a digital. You're getting like a file A file here. I can do it right now. I'm going to take a picture of this (laughs) screenshot it right now. Boom. I just got it. That's got it. Dollars. Two of a kind. Just like that. Uh, you know it's it's going to be you know we we see hot wheels collectors when we go to the shows or whatever uh-huh. you know, they 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 come out in droves they do you, just, you see you know uh hot wheels with the you know the original ones from 68 red lines mint paint can sell for tens of thousands of dollars absolutely absolutely so, you, so they need to find that person that spends that kind of money on hot wheels and that kind of money on nfts mm-hmm how easy is that going to be? I mean, I don't even think it's going to be a Hot Wheel collector that buys these. No, it's going to be an investor because that's who does this stuff. So auction starts June twenty second, nine a.m. Pacific, um, and the starting bid is ninety nine cents. What do you think the final bid? It's a one of one. What do you think the final <sighs> bid goes for on these? Um, and you have to pay. Uh, you have to be. You have to pay in Ethereum. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so if if we could convert Ethereum to dollars, because I don't know what the <laughs> rate is. So let's just say the dollar equivalent. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say the twin mill will go for the most because I think that's the most iconic of these. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know, seventy grand. Seventy grand. Okay. Yeah. Are that, we, that's. Are we doing prices right rules? Because I, I, you know, I'm going to do. I'm going to be the a hole that goes. I know. <laughs> are we doing prices right rule? Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, so it's basically like higher or lower. I'm going to say seven. You said 70,000. Yep. I'm going to say 70,000 and one dollars, Bob. And I, I'll tell you why. I don't know. Cause this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this is really stupid. You know, this is just, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, uh, no. you know, they're going to no. do he man figure NFTs. Oh my God. Scareglow will sell for like a billion dollars. <laughs> Space Cowboy, I bid one dollar. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, this isn't for me, but if somebody wants it, cool. Uh, but I do think this is kind of absurd. Yeah, Mattel Creations has done some absurd stuff. The four hundred dollar, fifteen dollar Baby Yoda toy was one of those things. This one, I think, is currently the winner of most absurd thing yep. uh, that a collector can buy right now, a toy collector. Yep. NFT. NFT. No effing thanks. Uh, NFT. I'm gonna, let's, let's try NFT Wikipedia. What does it mean? So a non-fungible token is a unit of data stored on a digital ledger called a blockchain that certifies a digital asset to be unique and therefore not interchangeable. And if these can be used to represent items such as photos, videos, audio, and other types of digital files. And uh, so I guess the NFT market value tripled in 2020, reaching more than 250 million. So I guess you have the rights and access to a one of a kind file of a right. picture of a car, I guess. That's just, oh man, it's just a money grab. Mattel. Yeah, those that I guess have cash to burn, I'm happy for you. Uh, other than that, I'd have, I, whatever. Yeah. You know what? If I would say if this included the original patent for the Twin Mill or the Diora or the, or no, the Bone, bone Shaker, I know. But what I'm saying is if it included something tangible, <laughs> it's worth it. You're not even getting this. But it's you, a digital you, token. You are, yeah. Whatever well, you're, sp- you're spending digital money on it, so what's, what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing matters. Nothing matters. None of this is real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't even get the you don't even get the pink slips. Nothing. You don't get anything. Oh lord. Listen, um, you're gonna get a thumb drive. Congratulations. Oh my god. Uh, I learned a lot tonight. Most of that fungible is a word. Yeah. It is. Um, uh, <laughs> you own the rights to the one of kind of item, but no one technically has to host the file for you. Uh, uh, moving on. Last thing. Uh, the Universal Monsters from Jada. This was a nice little surprise. Um, he looks great. Yeah. So that's pretty dope. Um, thoughts here, though. Jada doing this kind of stuff. 25 bucks. Um awesome. after after buying the 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 NECA Frankenstein, I need to see these guys in hand. Mm-hmm. These don't look as nice as the NECA ones. Well, the Dracula is okay. But the, the Frankenstein's not as good by pictures. No. Right? No, not by pictures, but if we hadn't had the NECA one at all, this is a pretty good figure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, again, I, I'm with you. It's a wait and see. Um, but I, if I had to probably spend money, I'd probably spend it on the NECA ones because they do look better. Or mm-hmm. oh, I don't know. I've seen them in person. They do look pretty good. But this uh, 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 Creature of the Black Lagoon looks really good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, wait and see. Because uh, is this Jada or Jada's first I think so because they've only been like first, first try at an yeah. articulated figure. Yeah. Yeah. 
But yeah, 25 bucks. I'm with you, CAF. They don't look bad, but the neck affairs look much better for the same price. But they, they've only shown Frankenstein, right? We've only seen in person Frankenstein right now, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, but Wolfman I, is next. Wolfman's next. I'm kind of like, I'd rather wait and see what they do before I'd spend 25 bucks on this. That's my final thoughts. What do you feel? Yeah. Same, same boat. Um, yeah. I think, I think they went, you know, brave doing, um, four at four at once, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that's just what they, they plan for, you know, per yeah. wave, if they're going to do another wave, but I, I got the Frankenstein, the NECA one. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> man, let's that roll TV. It was like a net, I think. Yeah, I think, you know, I bet you they made these figures not knowing NECA was also going to make them. Yeah. And they probably like, we got the universal license. This is great. We're going to put out these figures. Nobody's made a collector line for, for uh, universal in a while or whatever. Like, right. Since maybe McFarlane, uh, this is our chance. This is a great first step. And then NECA shows their Frankenstein picture. And they're like, damn it. <laughs> we got a chance. <laughs> Supposed to be my time. <laughs> <laughs> the president of Jada. Well, I can't retire now. <laughs> what am I gonna do? The president? No, the president of Jada was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> he's yelling at the boardroom. You idiots! <laughs> How did I not know this information? How did I not know Neko was doing these? <laughs> Intel department, you're fired. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh boy! Let's let's move on. We got toy hauls, John. Uh, I think did you go first last time? I, I think know. so. I think I went first last week. Yeah. All right, I'll go. So we had a toy show here this weekend in Raleigh, North Carolina. Inside Pitch Promotions, uh, the one that's been doing it forever. And uh, I had not. And for the you know how we became friends was really uh, me starting to set up and sell extra stuff for my collection at the inside pitch promote inside pitch promotions toy show. And really it was the collection that I bought where I got, um, the, uh, USS flag. It was a gigantic collection. I really wanted the flag, but I bought everything, but I had a lot of doubles. So I was like, all right, I convinced Colleen. I was like, okay, I'm going to sell a lot of this stuff from this collection. And it's going to be like a wash. You won't even, you won't even realize that I spent, a thousand dollars on all this stuff <laughs> and and colleen internally she was like you idiot that's not how this is gonna go but she was very kind it was like yeah honey you you go do <laughs> boy show and you make your money back and uh i had a great time and and you know and from that point on uh i generally would set up at the raleigh show you too uh, uh every single but you did it anyway before um uh, for the, for years, for years and years, but then the pandemic hit and, uh, I done one in a year and a half and finally got my vaccine, got the double vaccine and, you know, things are opening. I was like, all right, it's time. I'm ready to, you know, venture out into the world. Uh, our good friend Keith was setting up again for the first time. So we, we all set up, you were there set up on Friday and it was great. It was great. Just, you know, being there, seeing all of our friends and setting up and just shooting the, the shoot uh, and, you know, talking shop with everybody and, you know, haggling and trading and buying. Um, it was awesome. And even just once the show happened and seeing all the usual people that would come buy toys, all that kind of stuff, met a lot of people that say they watch this show, watch the reviews that I do, watch Toy Geeks. Like, wow. oh, I love, I love your show. Where's John? I was like, John uh, is a recluse. He doesn't leave his house. I <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so anyone that's watching right now, uh, it was really nice getting to meet you all. But anyway, so it was awesome. All that I say, it was awesome too. Um, <laughs> uh, kind of, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm the best. You are the best. <laughs> the best wife ever. You're the best person in the world. Uh, Colleen said it was weird not seeing John to ask if he had my back when you left me alone at the table. Yeah, Colleen usually comes and covers me to get lunch or something. Um, 
but uh, but I did sit up next to Keith, so she had she had friends. She had. Friends. <laughs> I'll be oh, there right. next time. <laughs> good, good. Uh, we we did miss having you, and then Ron and Paul weren't there either. Who are other group of friends that I was going to ask that are are like staples of of the Raleigh show. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't a full reunion yet, uh, but hopefully you know by September uh, it it'll be all of us there, which is um, which is pretty darn cool. All right, so. That being said, picked up some stuff. So I do want to share that here. I do want to make sure I get this website. Because uh, I think this is really good for Motu Origin collectors. And I know there's a lot of them here. Um, so somebody was set up near the front. Uh, and Shannon, who's been in the chat sometimes, you might be watching right now, uh, uh, clued me into this. That uh, there's this company, you know, Zola World. Long time legends of making cases for toys, right? Plastic cases. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, uh, the one I usually use is God, I'm kind of like on the name now. Actionfigurecases.com or something. Toy what is it? Toy Shield. Toy Shield, yeah. Well, this company called M E Lion Plastics uh, had made uh, toy shield protectors. For Motu Origins figures and uh, uh, Masters of the WWE verse figures, and uh, they, you know, they they're kind of just you know locking clamshell type packaging. Uh, I already have a Scare Glow kind of packed in here, uh, which looks great. Does its thing, nice and protected, which is awesome. Guess how much they were and still will sell these for these Motu Origins. Uh, containers they're 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 very cheap uh shannon clued me in they're they are oh, extremely cheap okay well then they're not gonna be exciting for you but for people in the chat two dollars that is a steal $2. that is a super steal for these things and again like i think toy shield is usually a little under five and what's zola world like eight they're, bucks? They're 10 bucks a piece 10 bucks a piece two dollars to protect your your Motu Origins figures. They had some other ones, like they had Black Series and stuff like that. But a lot of people have asked, like, do they have one or will the ones for vintage Motu work for Motu Origins? Well, they just made one straight up for Origins and, and Masters of the WWE verse figures. So uh, I am not sponsored by them. They did not. I bought these with my own money. Um, so this isn't, you know, some type of promotional thing. Um, I just think, you know, for two bucks, that's a pretty darn good deal. Um, so I did want to, sh oh, anyways, that's weird. I didn't make this small. There we go. We'll go to normal. Let's share it again. Um, it's M E lion plastics or just me lion, uh, me lion plastics.com. And they do a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, here it is right here. Um, oh, currently on back order. So that's new. Well, they had a crap ton of them at the show, so <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, those will be back up soon. But again, two dollars a piece uh, was a pretty darn good deal. So uh, M E Lion M E L Y O N P L A S T I C S dot com, um, and uh, Space Cowboy asked, uh, uh, "Sorry, do they make uh, protectors for big enough for deluxe figures? They are making them as we speak." So. Currently, they only have ones for the standard size, but they are making uh, cases for the deluxe figures, too. Um, so that is dope. Uh, do they have shields for wives? Uh, not yet. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so pretty cool. I was really, I was like, wow, that's, again, been collecting for a long time. These things were almost cost prohibitive. A lot of time is really only did it for ones that were like, you know, expensive figures, but at two bucks a pop, I feel like it's very reasonable to, you know, put cases around, you know, just about any carded figure that you want to keep. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how they're doing it for that cheap or, or whatever their deal is, but it, it works. So pretty dope. So that's M E L Y O N P L A P L A S T I C S dot com. Me lion or M E lion plastics. Okay. Oh, they got them coming for the the cats and vehicles. Uh, Josh Ruth says. Oh, he, they are. Oh, so there you go. Josh must be a, a friend, friend of the show, a friend of them. Awesome. 
Um, so still awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Uh, I will say I usually really buy heavy vintage at these shows, but there wasn't anything that really, uh, there wasn't anything I needed, um, which is saying something about how horrible my collection addiction is. Um, but there wasn't any ones that I was currently looking for, uh, which is fine because that means I didn't spend as much money. Uh, but uh, uh, our friend, mutual friend of the show, Keith, had some a whole bunch of vintage minifigures, Lego minifigures, and uh, the adventure dude. Um, uh, he had this one's one of my favorites from uh, the original Lego line, so I had to pick him up uh, for two bucks. And then, uh, if you're a Lego movie fan, Benny the Spaceman is one of my favorites, and this is just a straight up Spaceman uh, in the uh the blue suit so he's not without does he have a crack he does not have a crack so he's just a straight up you know blue spaceman even though they make a benny with the crack in the helmet um but still i was like two bucks for a, you know an old school blue spaceman it's a good deal i'll do that every time so keep <laughs> thank you as always great deals uh again shannon uh he picked up the uh five below battle cat Monster truck. So it's a meat retail for five bucks. So I was pretty pumped about that. Um, and then friend James, who sells at the show, the last piece I needed for my Rebels uh, Black Series collection. Awesome. Yeah. Very, Very cool. Kanan. Got to have Kanan. Uh, and then diehard baseball fan and uh baseball cards have been banned from all the stores i usually go to uh so it's a it's a sports card show as well which is was hopping because again it's 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 hotter than nfts <laughs> baseball cards. um but uh keith and i both kind of got a little a uh, little uh, crazy uh for for the uh, hobby packs so i picked up a a hobby pack for series two with my 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 San Diego man, Fernando Tatis Jr. on the box for Series 2. So really pumped for that. Uh, and uh, I think I saw uh, Keith uh, texted me while we're doing the show what which ones he got in his pack. So I was like, I made a deal. If I get any good Boston players, I'll send them. I'll trade because it's for his son, Lance. I'll, I'll trade Lance for any Padre ones that he gets. Uh, <laughs> for any good Boston ones that I get. How many cards come in a hobby pack? This is the smaller one. So this one comes with like 300 and some odd cards. Comes with 24, 14 cards packed. And you're guaranteed an autograph or relic card in this one. Um, don't tell Colleen. But So I got this one, but then I also got another one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have to tell her. I think she's going to see it. Uh, and then I bought another jumbo pack. And this pack comes with uh, one autograph and two relic cards. Oh. So... Uh, I'm pretty pumped uh, to, to crack these open uh, with Zach at some point. And then last, last but not least, uh, friend of the show. He's been in the chat tonight. <laughs> Colleen. <laughs> WTF OMG. It's okay, Colleen. It's fine. Uh, uh, Gary, uh, again, in, in Target where everything is. <laughs> exactly. He's going to bring the spare cards to the next show exactly. and make his money back. I'm make my money back. It's going to be fun. Gary found the Turtles in Disguise set at his Target uh, and picked it up uh, for me. And, I, and he brought it by and I, I graciously paid him the monies uh, for it. Um, so pumped to get this set because in my targets i must just miss it it never i never found it in the briar creek target or um <clears throat> the lynn road target which are the closest ones to me that i go to so anywho all right <laughs> mirage you never saw it colleen it was never here <laughs> Woo. You know, I the way I justified to myself is I can't find them in store, so I'm just gonna buy these boxes and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, it's your turn. What do you got? All right. Oh boy. Um you sent me a picture. I gotta make sure I move it. Yes. Up. 
Um, so first, I because I already mentioned it, um, the NECA Frankenstein. I picked him up. I picked him up two weeks ago, and I didn't show him last week. But he is so awesome, and I don't think you're gonna have to worry about his joints. His joints actually feel just as good as the the Kong figure. So if it has that kind of ratchet, yeah, like you, like he feels unbreakable. Wow. Yeah. Of course, you can just stitch him back together. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he is a really good. He's a really good figure. They did a great job on him. Wow. Right, let me see him again. Let me see his face and stuff. I, I yeah. got his. I got his sort of, sort of grin. Oh. On. Ooh, that's creepy. Oh man. He came with. He came with uh, three heads total. And it's 20, 24 bucks. Uh, I think he's 30. 30 bucks? Yeah. That's worth it. That looks amazing. Yep. Uh, is uh, Kevin Lewis says, is that Frankie black and white? No, this is the color version. Okay. The Walmart does the color version and maybe everywhere else does black and white. Okay. I, I can't remember who has the black and white, but I think Walmart is the only place to get the color version. Okay. And then, thanks to you, Jay, you got blood. Oh yeah! And there, there he is loading up his his Ooh. launcher gun. That's a good pose. I love. I dig that pose. This is such a good figure, man. They are doing such a good job on the faces. Uh yeah, they are. The face, the face sculpts on on uh, classified is just some of the best, if not the best, at the twenty dollar price point. Yeah. I would say the best for yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah. This is the I, best. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree. The best you can buy for 20 bucks. Yeah. hundred percent. Speaking of universal monsters and Keith, <laughs> <laughs> I picked up this gem from Keith. Woo. That's a hot tape. Hot take. You can hear, you can hear Frankenstein and Dracula talk. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what they're saying yet. Have you dropped the needle yet? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but this is probably just going to go in, you know, backdrop with the NECA figures mm -hmm. once I get them all. Um, I love this art. I love it. It looks great. It does yeah. look good. Um, and the vinyl itself looks good, too. Uh, Darth Vader said, did people get their barbecue and breaker pre-orders in? Uh, did you, I think you did, John, right? Yep. Yes, I did. Uh, I decided not to, even though it was up for a while, I decided not to and just wait till they're in person just because... I don't know. I've, I've had relative luck in person and, and blood. Holy moly. This was the week for blood. There was like 10,000 in targets everywhere this week. Rain and blood everywhere. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and Shannon, our buddy Shannon, mm -hmm. picked this up for him for, for retail. Boom. Which is nice. And I know they're all over the place now. I didn't realize that Skeletor, the, the Skeletor head, has like jeweled eyes. Oh, yeah. I thought I told you that. No, I didn't know that. I'm a bad friend. Or maybe I just forgot it. You know, I did a video review of it, and I haven't posted yet because I didn't finish it. Or I shot all the footage for it. But yeah, he's got the jewel eyes. Just looking to I haven't decided if I'm going to open it or not. Mm, I think you, wait till you have a display. Then I think it's worth it. Yeah. And then you picked this up for me. Yes, I did. From Mike. Land shark. Land shark. Land shark. Land shark. I might get nerd bombers. Mm -hmm. As well as Ram Man. Oh, yeah. And the new Evil Inn. It, such a busy week. Such a busy toy week. I got my Evelyn right here because I was going to uh, show how easy are. Go. I got my Evelyn right here that I got from him and then just put it in here like this. Da -na 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 -na. Da -na 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 -na. Click it in the thing and it's ready to go. <laughs> They're going to call you for the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> da, na, 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 na. What, you, you should show them your my buddy my grayscale commercial <laughs> you will be sold <laughs> uh then um 
you also picked me up the Skeletor. Uh, yes. Battle armor. Again from Mike. Great figure. Yes. And then again from Shannon, I filled out the other battle armor. Yes. He had a uh, buzzsaw Hordex too. Did you pick one up from him? I didn't. I didn't know that. Oh, he had like a crap tender over there. Oh, no, nah, because he was selling me the stuff out of the back of his van before I was leaving. <laughs> he hadn't he had not even he hadn't even unpacked to set up. <laughs> and I didn't even think about our, uh, the bus or Hordak to, to ask if he had it. Um, I should have. You should have. You should have done it. Or I, you know, I, don't know, I could have asked, too. Uh, I I thought you had gotten it because he had so many over there, but I realized now when you were talking to him, he hadn't set up yet. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I'll 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 get one. Yeah, they seem to be showing up. Uh, so hopefully it's not that hard. Um, uh, Shannon's van, just so you know, he had a, a camper uh, van uh, as a setup. And uh, so getting out of you approaching that van and taking a toy out of it uh, was a risky proposition. So <laughs> <laughs> If you see me on a milk carton, <laughs> you know where I went. <laughs> and then one one little thing, um, our friend Jimmy, who sets up at the toy shows, yep. him and his sister Cindy, they're always the the monster people. They always got great monsters, mm -hmm. alien predator, yeah, Ray Harryhausen stuff. Uh, he knows I'm a huge Jaws fan. Mm -hmm. And anytime he's out in the wild, he was down at Universal Studios and there was mm -hmm. a guy outside Universal that had like a little yard sale, something set up and he was selling old Universal and Disney merchandise. Mm -hmm. And he saw this old Jaws magnet that he picked uh, up for me. Yeah, that's dope. That's so cool. Yeah. He's always so he's always so awesome. He, he mm -hmm. just finds stuff. I got to get this for John. I got to get this for John. Mm -hmm. Then he'll hold, hold, hold on to it for me. You mm -hmm. know, it's been a year and a half since we've seen all these people. <laughs> I know it's unbelievable. <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. Well, um, I think, I think we should close it there. We're already at an hour and a half. We'll save some John for next week. Everyone's going to be freaking out in the chat right now, but we'll save it for next week. Uh, I do. I do have a couple good uh, ones that have been sent. Dartherian sent in a couple, um, and we still have some from last week. Uh, so I promise. Oh, you know what? Next week, we're probably going to take next week off. Oh, yeah. We might have two weeks. Yeah, so it may be, it may be not next Sunday, but the Sunday following uh, to the next time we do us. Toy Geeks, I will be flying back in from being out of town, uh, uh, going for a quick day trip somewhere. Uh, and, uh, John, you might be like going away the next day or something like that. So anyway, yep. uh, we, we may not be doing one next week unless something big happens. Uh, let's, let's say this, John, if you're available, I don't know if I'm, I'm promising something you can't do, but if something big happens toy wise during the week, maybe we'll do like a special, I don't know, midweek thing or something after school, special after school, special, a toy geeks after school, special. Uh, but Sunday probably won't work out. Uh, this next Sunday probably won't work out for us. So, uh, Colleen's like, <laughs> you aren't going to be able to do it. I know, Colleen. That's what I'm saying right now to my friends. Quit embarrassing me in front of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Should we do one? Should we just do one single? Sure. Why not? Why not? All right, here we go. I, mean, I got to This is from like last week because we didn't get to this one. Though. All right. Hold do on. we, do you have the answer for it? I know. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna try to make sure I have the answer to uh, is it this one. No. Yeah, this Darth Theorians was were before or after. I just gotta find the answer again. Is it this one. Okay. Yep. All right. Here we go. I got one image. I do have the answer to it. So, uh, John, now it's time for that special moment of every episode of Twig Geeks when we have time. It's time to stump John. John says he's the most amazing toy collector of all time that knows everything about everything. And so we'll challenge that tonight on Stump John. <laughs> I hope I don't let you down. 
All right, here we go. This might this may be a quick one for you. I don't know. So here we go. Share the screen. Do you know what this accessory is? Nope. I, I know right away. No. Battle nope. axes are always tough. No, there's so many of them. Ah, I thought I thought this one would have been an easy one for you. <sighs> hmm. Yes. Take a guess. Mm hmm. Swing for the fences. Hail Mary. Doug Flutie. <sighs> Boston College. Um, is the guy? Is it the guy from Last Action Hero? Is that your guess? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember there's a guy that like throws a battle axe. <laughs> that's my that, that that's all I can come up with right now. Mm. I'm trying to give him a clue. I'm trying to like how do I give a clue without giving it away? Okay. What what, what is the what's the company? What's the company? Mm, yeah, let me see. Yeah. Is that really that? Yeah. I'll, I, this is a clue I'm going to give you. Uh, light late night TV host. <laughs> X Wing and Conan O'Brien. <laughs> Kind of. Um, <laughs> Conan. Conan. Okay, so it's a Conan figure. It's a Conan. Is it like McFarlane Conan? Well, this, this is where I'm kind of a little confused. I didn't think that this company made one. This is from Andrew and says it's a Mego Conan Axe. Oh, yeah. This, there's a Mego Conan. Mm -hmm. I remember this one being from there. So, But that's what he, that's what he says. Mego Conan Axe. Yeah, I wouldn't have never gotten that yeah nope all right all right i i thought you would have gotten that's okay that's okay it's all good um uh geek mom i've a lot of people are asking for colleen to have a channel i offered i offered to set her up and she said no honey i don't want to be as lame as you are <laughs> exact words <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> oh man all right well, uh, that uh, <laughs> Phineas Migos Conan Axe is my band's name. That's a good band name. It's a good band name. All right, that'll do it for this week's Toy Geeks. Uh, we will not be at our normally scheduled time next Sunday. Again, something could happen this week where we want to do a quick little something to hang out. So just make sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon on Geek Dad Life. That's the way that you know that a new show is coming around. If you hit that bell icon, YouTube will be like, hey, just so you know, this is going to start in 30 minutes. That's how you make sure that you don't miss it. Also, hit that like button uh, if you like this stuff. I mean, if you're hanging around, if you've made it this far an hour and a half in, clearly you like it. So hit the like button. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Hasta luego. And goodbye.